All right, let's look at what a fun mess I've got. Sticky back disc holders, Velcro disc holders, more Velcro disc holders, interface pads for the Velcro disc holders, some miscellaneous metalworking abrasives, plastic storage bin of semi-organized wood turning abrasives, my backup stock of wood turning abrasives. There's probably something else in there, another disc holder maybe. Oh, yippee, partially used up wood turning abrasives. I think that's a Rolock metalworking abrasive holder. And a few more disc holders for the metalworking abrasives. Now the one thing to keep in mind here, folks, it, this stuff is all in one place now, but when I rounded it up for the video, I actually had to dig it out of four separate locations. And I doubt I'm the only person who has this problem. What we're going to do in this video is use this Milwaukee Packout Toolbox, some Kaizen foam that's actually cut very precisely to fit in the Packout Toolbox, and a bunch of really widely available jars to organize this train wreck so that all the abrasives and the abrasive accessories are organized and in one place. So, let's get to it. The first and perhaps most time-consuming part of this entire project is to precisely cut a piece of Kaizen foam to fit into this toolbox. I have an entirely separate video on how to make a template that matches the inside of whatever box you're using, and then how to use that template to cut the Kaizen foam so it fits really, really tightly. But suffice to say, it is possible to cut this foam so it fits extremely well. One of the keys to making this whole thing work is this, and this is just a standard four ounce mason jar. Sometimes the ones with the quilted sides are actually referred to as jelly jars. You can get these in a case of 12 for 10 or $12 less if they're on sale. And these jars are perfectly suited for storing a two inch diameter abrasive. And the nice thing about this system, if you lay everything out for these jars, the next size up, which is an eight ounce mason jar, will fit into the same holes. And they hold about twice as much. And these are about the same price. And in fact, sometimes these eight ounce jars are actually a little less expensive if you can find the ones that are plain sided. Now that we've got the Kaizen foam fit into the pack out toolbox, we can go about laying out exactly where these jars are gonna go. Now I've done a little bit of work prior to shooting this video. And so I know that I want things laid out approximately like this. I'm also going to use this storage container that comes with the Packout Toolbox just so I have some space for miscellaneous items that don't get used very often. Once you get these things laid out, you can either draw around them like you would with just about anything else that you put in Kaizen foam or what I think is much easier to do, drill a hole because these will just sit right down into a hole. Fortunately, they have a center mark on them which actually makes the next step quite easy. I've determined ahead of time what the center to center distance needs to be, but trying to use a black magic marker on this black Kaizen foam does not work very well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to put down some painter's tape and we're going to put the markings on that. What I've done here is lay out the center marks for the 12 jars like this that I'm going to be using. As you can see, I'm one and a half inches off the back, off these dividers in the back, one and three quarters of an inch over from this on the side. The center to center distance between the jars horizontally is three and a half inches, and each one of the rows is three inches center to center apart. There is actually room down here on the bottom to squeeze in a fourth row if you so chose. Uh, as for my metric viewers, which is basically the entire rest of the world outside of the US, I apologize. More than likely, you'll have different jars anyhow, and, and you'll have to lay them out on your own. There is actually no reason you can't just put these things down, put a dot, and get on with your life. If they're not perfectly lined up, the functionality of the system doesn't change. It just doesn't look quite as tidy as it would otherwise. And frankly, if I'm going to go this far, I want it to look nice as well. Now that the locations of all 12 jars have been laid out, the next step is to pull the Kaizen foam out of the Packout toolbox and go drill some holes. We're over at the drill press. This is a two and three eighths inch drill bit. And I have tested that size on a scrap piece of Kaizen foam. 
and that fits down really well. And I've got the depth of the drill bit set to leave about three layers of the Kaizen foam, and that leaves plenty of room for any ribs or anything that go along the bottom of the packout toolbox. All right, now before I drill anything, I have taken this little Phillips screwdriver, I have poked pilot holes in all the cross points to make it easier to line up the pilot point on the drill bit with the exact center point that I want to be drilling. Now let's drill some holes and uh, hopefully not screw anything up in the process. Now to demonstrate the way I found easiest to line up the drill press and the Kaizen foam, I've punched another little hole here. And you just kind of have to move it in. It's tough to see on camera, but you basically line up the pilot point of the drill with the pilot hole on the Kaizen foam while the drill is off instead of trying to do it while the drill is running. And it is a whole lot easier to line things up that way. Now we're back over at the toolbox. Now before I put the foam back in, I want to cut a chunk off of this side to make room for this storage container. Now to make sure I've marked it in the proper spot, I put some tape there and then I get on the front and I'm going to use those two pieces of tape to mark where the edge of this storage container actually is. Now marking this can be a little challenging. What I'm going to do is use this steel ruler to extend the side of the container to the edge of the toolbox. Now, as you'll see, I've got some marks right there. This is actually going to be on this side of where that container is. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. I will use these to mark the foam, but then I will cut the foam on this side of the line by about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more. And by overcutting the foam, I will make sure to get as snug a fit as possible. Now I'm going to pull the foam out one more time and I'm going to cut this piece away, but it's going to be on this side of this line right here. And now for the moment of truth. So very nice. I'm almost surprised. All right, we're getting close. Let's get some of this other stuff in here. Well, folks, there we have it. Everything actually in one place with a little room to spare. Like I said earlier, this larger jar, right on in there. And even with this tall jar and all these disc holders still sitting here, the lid shuts no problem. And folks, there we have it. From disaster to highly organized with a little room to spare. My purposes for this are actually to store wood turning abrasives, but the two inch sanding disc size is also used really widely in metalworking 
and there's no reason that this system won't provide the same advantages to somebody who has a whole bunch of different Scotch-Brite discs and sanding discs for whatever type of metalworking you may happen to do. And the one nice thing about using these pack-out cases is that they have a gasket on them, and so when the lid is actually shut, the dust has been shut out, and it seems like every shop has dust. And now I'd like to thank everybody who's watched this video all the way through. I very sincerely hope this is going to be useful for you. While you're here, if you could please give this video a thumbs up, watch another video, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. All those things help this channel grow, and I most certainly appreciate them. So goodbye for now, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching, folks.